And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to another review. Today we're taking a look at a little game called Crypt. Now, Crypt the King is dead. <laughs> um, his last wish was to be laid rest with his possessions. That's stupid. But, and, and, and of course, you are one of his kids. You are not happy about this. You want that stuff. So you're going to break into the crypt and steal it. But everyone else is also breaking into the crypt and stealing it too. So that's the setup for basically a dice placement game. But in this game, you never roll the, oh, I shouldn't say you never roll the dice. You actually do roll the dice a lot. But you, when most of the time, you are picking the side of the dice to put out. What? Here's how it plays. This game is going to be full of lots of different items that you're going to want to get. The cards all show you what type that item is, and that item is going to have a value on it from one to four, showing various things from tapestries to jewelry. And so you're going to be collecting these over the course of the game. You're also going to have some people here in the game, and you can see them right across the top here. I have them on their A sides, but they can also have a B side. And these can give you special abilities that you can use over the course of the game or scoring things at the end of the game. For example, here, this person here says every time that you collect one of the idols, you put it face down in front of you, you can flip it face up on your turn to re-roll a die. So every time you collect one of these, you get that special ability that you can use once. And I can recover a die by flipping over two greens. Other ones here, like this one for example, says that as I'm collecting the different manuscripts, one of these manuscripts is whatever, but once I get two manuscripts in front of me, then all my manuscripts are going to be worth four, regardless of the number on them. And these can be flipped to either side, so you have various uh, special powers and or end game scoring that can come from these. Each round of the game, one person's going to be the leader, and that's going to go around the table, and the other person's going to be lights out. You're going to shuffle this deck and put a certain number of face up cards in front of the players and face down cards. So in a four player game, for example, here's the four face up, here's the two that are face down. Each player has three dice that they're gonna be using. And so whoever is the leader will go first and whoever is lights out will go last. You could place your dice that you have on these cards and you can put them on any number you want. So let's say, for example, the red player does this. Then the next player is the purple player. So the purple player decides to go here and then they're going to pay, the red player gets their die back. The purple player also goes here, and the purple player decides not to use their third die. The blue player decides to go, and the blue player decides that they want to be higher than the six here and take the spot. So they're going to put two fours on it, which once again sends the red die back to the red player. The blue player also puts a one on this card here. Now the black player, because they are the last player, is lights out. They can only go onto one treasure card. So they're like, you know what, they're just going to be safe. They're going to put a one on this card here. That's it. So now whoever has dice in each card is going to take it. However, you are going to roll the die. And if you roll less than the number, <laughs> then that is an exhausted, these are servants by the way. So this guy rolls it, four, he's fine. Doesn't have to roll. This one. Do, it's a four, which is less than six, so that's thrown into the box. Exhausted leaders. The blue player rolls both of his, rolls two fours, lucky. And then these two come back. So all the dice come back. The only person who lost a die this round is the purple player. And then everyone gets their cards, and whoo, that was a four purple. Nice. The cards are given to players, and then we'll go again. Once players have exhausted servants in here, and you will possibly get more, or maybe all your ser servants in here, then on your turn, instead of placing dice, you can pull them back out of here. Also, I should mention the lights out and leader will pass around the table. If you have all your dice in here and you put out one die and that someone kicks that die out, then you will get your exhausted servants back for free. So you gotta be careful in kicking people out because you may be giving them their dice back. I also mentioned you can use these special abilities on these cards here, and then that's it. When the deck is completely run out, everyone will score up all their cards, counting in any of these special scorings, like here, whoever has the most coins on purple gets an extra five, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So you use the sides of the box here to store stuff, so your exhausted servants are going to be put here, and any treasures that no one puts dice on will be thrown in here also. So. 
you know, just nice to use these boxes over the course of the game. The cards themselves have a linen finish on them. They're nice. I like how they look on the back here, like a crypt, you know, but you can see the different symbols and their colors at the top, so that's pretty easy to tell apart. And here's where I'm going to probably differentiate a little bit. I really like the art on like these tapestries are especially good, but all the objects are fantastic and everything looks really nice. I am less excited about the artwork on the character cards. For me, it almost feels like, I don't know, they just don't, uh, this is subjective, right, on how these characters look. Each player gets a card that's going to show who they are, and that's fine. And they both start as male and female, that's fine. And yet it's somehow they manage to look almost like petulant, Game of Thrones ripoffs, maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I wasn't thrilled about this, but that's art's a very subjective thing. That's really my only complaint. The rule book's really simple because the game is really simple. It's an easy game to play. The components, for the most part, very happy with them. So who's the most powerful person in this game? Not the first player, because whatever they put out, everyone else is going to probably just push off their dice. Not the last player, because they can only go to one spot. It's the second last player, because they know where they put two of theirs. You know, if they put out all three dice, if they have all three dice, then they know two of them are going to be safe. The third, the, the last person can only knock off one of them. So it's fun to be the third last player. <laughs> At the same time, the first player can make everybody pay for it. I'm putting out three sixes. But then your chance of having to roll those and likely lose them is high. So there is luck in the game. Obviously, uh, I've seen really luck, like you saw one there, where a person put out two fours. They roll the dice, boom, got two fours, get to keep both of them. While someone else might put out two twos, roll the dice, and get two ones. Although you don't normally put out two twos, you'll just put out one four. But the concept of the game is pretty simple. Put out dice, the higher the die, the more likely the chance you get it, but also a good chance of you losing that die. Simple, easy, and it's fun. The special powers are good. Um, I almost wish there was more end game scoring. The special power ones are okay, uh, but they're, they're just not like, ooh, I, I can reroll a die. Okay, that's neat and all, but that still makes the purple cards in that particular game way more getting. Getting some cards that let me reroll dice is not as good as just simple extra points at the end of the game. I do like it though. It's a little small game. It says 25 minutes here in the box. That's pretty close to accurate. One to four players. You can play solitaire if you want. Um, it plays quickly. I, I, I almost, my, maybe one of my complaints is I think this could have actually fit two more players. Maybe have up to six players. Other than that though, it's a small little game that packs a little bit of a punch. Does something I haven't seen before, letting you place your dice like uh, you know, almost like bidding, but then rolling and possibly losing them. That's, that, that's a nifty idea. And it works well. It's light, but it's intentionally so. And I think that in a, in a field of a lot of light games, this one stands a little bit out. Definitely one I would check out. Crypt. Dice Tower Judgment. Approved.